Um, all right, so let's, let's go ahead and do this and take a look at some of the actual atoms that we can think about and think about them in, mo in molecules. So our simplest case that we started talking about was molecular hydrogen. I want to finish this discussion by including the antibonding orbital. And this is a tip for you when you're drawing your molecular orbital diagrams. Anytime you draw a bonding orbital, there is also an antibonding orbital that exists. It might not have any electrons in it, but it still exists, so you need to draw these into your uh, molecular orbital diagram. So I wanted to make sure you have a complete set for hydrogen in your notes. So let's take a look at this. Hydrogen, we can first draw in our atomic electrons. So there's one electron in each hydrogen atom. And then this means we'll have a total of two electrons in our hydrogen molecule. So we can fill both of those into the sigma 1s orbital, the bonding orbital. We don't have to put anything into the antibonding orbital, so that's great. What we've seen is we have a net lowering of energy of the molecule versus the individual atoms. So let's draw the electron configuration of hydrogen, the molecule, molecular hydrogen. Um, what you saw, what we've done a lot of is drawing the electron configurations for different atoms. We can do the same thing for molecules. So if we take H2, and we want to draw the electron configuration. It's very short. All it is is sigma 1s, and then we have two electrons in it, so it's sigma 1s squared. So this is our electron configuration. Let's take a look at another example. Let's draw the molecular orbital diagram for He2 now. So again, we can fill in our atomic uh, orbitals here. There's going to be two electrons in each of our atomic orbitals. So now let's go ahead and fill in our molecular orbitals. We need to fill in a total of four electrons. So we have two electrons in our bonding orbital, but because we we're, we're use the same rules to fill up molecular orbitals as we do atomic orbitals, so the Pauli exclusion principle tells us we can't have more than two electrons per orbital, so we have to go up to our antibonding orbital here. So this means that we have two of the electrons are lowered in energy, but two are raised in energy. So would this be a stabilized molecule then? No. So compared to the atoms, it should be somewhat the same energy. We shouldn't get any extra stabilization from forming the molecule. Uh, so let's go ahead and write what the electron configuration would be of He2. And again, we're just filling in the different orbitals. So we have sigma 1s. That's going to be squared. And then we have sigma 1s star squared. So we can compare the two uh, electron configurations, and we can actually uh, think about what we figure out from them. And we see that two are lowered in energy, two electrons are raised in energy. So we have no net gain or no net loss in energy for He2. And there's actually a way that we can make predictions here. And what I'll tell you is molecular orbital theory predicts that He2 does not exist because it's not stabilized uh, in terms of forming the molecule.